The back contract is the most important contract in the DAI stablecoin system. This contract is responsible for storing CDP, collateralized debt position, which means that it stores the amount of collateral that the user locked and the amount of DAI that the user borrowed. Information about the collateral, such as the total debt that was borrowed using this collateral and the spot price of the collateral is stored in a struct called ILK. And the information about the collateralized debt position is stored in a struct called yearn. And of course, the naming is a little bit difficult to understand. So in this video, we will rename the structs and the state variables that store these structs. So from the back contract, I'm going to copy the struct and also the state variables that store these structs. These state variables are called IOKS and yearns. Inside my editor, I have the contract CDP engine open. For this video series, we renamed the back contract as CDP engine. And here, I'm going to paste the code that we copied. Next, we'll rename the structs. Before we start renaming stuff, I first put the original name so that after we rename them, we still know which variable we changed. So let's start with IOK. Let's rename this struct. IOK is a struct that holds information about the collateral. In the DAI stablecoin system, it can support multiple collaterals. So it makes sense that each collateral will have some kind of information and configuration stored in a struct. Let's rename this to collateral. Collateral. The first field in the struct is called art. This will represent the total normalized debt. Total debt is easy to understand. It is the total debt or the total amount of die that was borrowed using this collateral. How about normalized debt? What does normalized debt mean? Well, recall from the previous video that inside the MakerDAO stablecoin system, the debts are calculated by multiplying the debt by the rate accumulation function. Normalized debt will represent the debt that was borrowed divide by the value of the rate accumulation function when the debt changed. Let me explain this using some equations. Let's say d of i is the delta debt at time i. And we'll say r of i is equal to the value of the rate accumulation function at time i. Art is equal to the summation of delta debt divided by the value of the rate accumulation function at that time. For example, let's say at time t0, some user came in to borrow some die. Let's label this amount d0, the amount of die that they borrow. We divide this by the value of the rate accumulation function at that time, r0. And then later on, let's say some other user came to borrow some die. Let's call this d1. So to this d1, we would divide by the rate accumulation function at that time, r1, and then so on. So you just add up all of these values, and this will be equal to r. So let's rename this as debt. OK, moving on, rate. Rate is the value of the rate accumulation function. So let's be more precise and say rate ACC, short for rate accumulation or accumulated rates. Next is a field named spot. This is a price with safety margin. The way to think about this is that this is some percentage of the spot price. Let's say that the safety margin is 20% and the collateral is ETH, the current price of ETH is $2,000. So the spot will be equal to the current price of the collateral times one minus the safety margin. In our example, the price of the collateral, the price of ETH, is $2,000 times the safety margin is 20%. So this will be 1 minus 0.2. This turns out to be 0.8. So $2,000 times 0.8. This is equal to $1,600. Now why is the actual spot price being multiplied by this safety margin? The safety margin exists so that the MakerDAO stablecoin system reduces the possibility of unrecoverable loss when the price of the collateral suddenly drops. For example, let's say that the safety margin is 0% and the price of the collateral ETH is $2,000. The user locks one ETH as collateral. The maximum amount of die that this user can borrow at this moment is given by the spot times collateral amount. In this example, since the safety margin is equal to zero, the spot will be equal to the current market price of ETH, $2,000, times the amount of collateral that this user locked, one ETH. So the user can borrow max 2,000 die. And here, for simplicity, let's assume that there is no interest rate. Now, let's consider the case what happens when the price of beef sharply drops to $1,800. At this point, the user has borrowed more die than what their collateral can cover. The price of beef is 1,800. The amount of die that they borrowed is 2,000. This is a situation where the user's debt is under collateralized. Let's do the calculation for max borrow again. Max borrow is the spot times the collateral amount. The spot will be $1,800, the market price of beef. 
and the amount of collateral is 1. So the max borrow is $1,800. At this point, since the user has borrowed more DAI than the value of their collateral, their collateral will be liquidated. So let's go through an example of what will happen when this one ETH is liquidated. Since the current price of ETH is $1,800 and there is one ETH as collateral that is sold in a liquidation, the liquidator will put in some amount of DAI to get one ETH. Whatever amount of DAI that the liquidator is going to put in, they're not going to put in more than 1,800 DAI. This is because they're only going to get one ETH back, which is at the current price is $1,800. Let's say they put in above 1,800 die, 2,000 die. Then they're going to lose 200 die. They put in 2,000 die and then get back one ETH, which is priced at $1,800. The maximum amount that any reasonable user will pay will be 1,800 die. Since the liquidator repaid the MakerDAO die stablecoin system with 1,800 die, we still have 200 debt that cannot be recovered anymore. There will be zero ETH as collateral. This ETH collateral was given to the liquidator and the liquidator paid 1,800 DAI. So the remaining debt is 200 DAI that is unbacked now. So this is what I mean by unrecoverable debt. Now let's go through the same example. And this time we'll set a safety margin that is greater than zero. And let's see what happens. Let's say that the safety margin is 20% and the current price of ETH is $2,000. The user is going to lock ETH as collateral and borrow some DAI. Let's see what happens when the price of beef sharply drops to $1,800. To borrow die, the user first locks one ETH as collateral. The current price of beef is $2,000. What is the max borrow? What is the maximum amount of die that this user can borrow? Well, this is given by the spot multiplied by the collateral amount. The spot is equal to the current market price of the collateral, $2,000. The safety margin is 20%, so this will be 1 minus 0.2, which is equal to 0.8. And the amount of collateral is 1. So this is equal to $1,600. The user can borrow a max of 1,600 DAI. And again, for simplicity, we'll assume that the interest rate is 0. Now what happens when the current price of beef falls to $1,800? Let's start by calculating the max borrow when the price of the collateral is $1,800. Again, we'll use this same equation. The current price of beef is $1,800. Multiply this by the safety margin. 1 minus 0.2, and then multiply by the amount of collateral, 1. This turns out to be $1,440. So again, this user can now be liquidated. The maximum amount of die that they can borrow when they locked one ETH at the price of $1,800 is $1,440 die. What's the amount of die that they have borrowed so far? 1,600 die. So they over borrowed by 160 die. Hence, this user's collateral will be liquidated. So let's go through an example of liquidation. The liquidator will repay this user's debt by repaying with DAI, and in return, they'll receive some ETH. Currently, there is one ETH as collateral, and the price is $1,800. If the liquidator repaid all 1,600 DAI, then they're guaranteed that the amount of ETH that they will get back will cover for the amount of DAI that they repaid. When the liquidator repays this 1,600 DAI, they'll receive this equivalent amount in ETH plus some bonus. So there is some incentive for a liquidator to repay all of the debt and make some profit. So the liquidator will repay a maximum of 1,600 DAI. Since the current price of collateral is $1,800 and the debt to repay is 1,600 DAI, the amount of ETH that the liquidator will receive will be less than one ETH but we can safely say that the liquidator will be able to cover for the amount of debt that they repay. Okay, and let's do the math. The liquidator has an incentive to repay all of 1,600 DAI, and they do that. So now this debt is all gone. The unrecoverable debt that remains in the DAI stablecoin system is zero. The liquidator repaid all of the debt. So this is how having a safety margin reduces the possibility of the MakerDAO stablecoin system from creating a debt that cannot be recovered. Let's keep this field the same. Let's not rename this. Okay, moving on, line. It says line is debt ceiling. In other words, this will be the maximum debt that can be borrowed using this collateral. Here we have a debt that keeps the total debt that was borrowed using this collateral. Line will be the maximum debt. Let's rename this to max debt. Okay, and then we have dust. Yearn debt floor. 
What this means is the minimum debt that must be borrowed when we create a collateralized debt position. And why do we need a minimum debt? Well, imagine the case that we did not have a minimum debt. For example, a user can put in one EFS collateral and then borrow one DAI. And now imagine the case that the gas cost to liquidate is roughly $20. If the price of E falls and the collateral must be liquidated, no one will do it since liquidation will cost around $20, but the debt to repay is $1. In liquidating this position, the liquidator will roughly lose $19. To prevent users from creating a small debt that the liquidators are discouraged to liquidate, this minimum debt exists. So let's rename this to min debt. Okay, so we're done with the struct collateral. Let's next move on to renaming the struct yearn. Yearn is basically a bolt, or also known as CDP, collateralized debt position. When a user locks their collateral and then borrow die, this struct will hold information about the amount of collateral that was locked and the amount of debt that was borrowed. So let's rename this struct. I'll call this position for collateralized debt position. And ink will hold the amount of collateral that was locked for this position. I'll rename ink to collateral. And art will be the normalized debt that was borrowed against this collateral. Let's call this debt. Now, as a reminder, normalized debt means that it's the sum of the actual amount of debt that was borrowed divided by the value of the rate accumulation function when the debt was borrowed. Okay, we're now done with the struct collateral and position. Let's move on to the state variables that hold these structs. So we have two structs, IOKS and yearns. Let's rename IOKS to collaterals and yearns to positions. IOKS is a mapping from bytes 32. This will be a 32 byte ID for the collateral. It maps from a bytes 32 ID to the information about the collateral. Next, let's look at the mapping yearns. We renamed this as positions, and it's a nested mapping from bytes32 to another mapping that maps from address to yearn. We renamed the yearn as position. Yearns will map from IOK ID, which is identified by bytes32, and then next it maps from the owner, address of the owner, to the position. So that's yearns.